Hello, this is Daniel Ritchie, the developer of Howler Digital Painter, um, and we are presently releasing as version 9.2, and I'd like to talk to you today about some of the new features that are in 9.2, and some of the work we've been doing on the, uh, the GUI, and also some of the new features we've introduced in this version. So I'd like to very briefly cover these features. Uh, Philip will most likely be covering them more in detail in the coming days and weeks. But uh, I'd like to talk to you um, about, first of all, the user interface, which we've really spent a great amount of time with on this in this version. Um, we've, uh, we've really tried to make it as usable as possible. We've introduced some new technologies and some, uh, some, some features that are going to make the, uh, the user interface look more attractive and uh, also be clearer and easier to understand. So uh, let me first start by uh, introducing that we've uh, we've added hot tracking to our interface, which means that uh, buttons are now highlighted when you move the mouse over them. As you can see, me moving the mouse over this menu item here. This helps um, the user understand what uh, what is uh, an active control and what is not. For example, um, a, a text label won't be highlighted because it's not active. It's just a uh, uh, a text string, for example, right here where it says opacity, it's just a, a piece of information that tells you what uh, what another control is or something like that. Uh, that is not highlighted, so just by moving the mouse over the uh, the button will give you a, a little piece of information um, that was not really available before because we did not have that hot tracking uh, activated in the program. So that is just one little detail we've added in, in Howler 9.2. Um, we've also worked on our, the layout um, of our of our interface. We've tried to um, keep everything as as clean and uh, uniform as possible. We've really done some work on that front. We've also eliminated some of the thick borders around our uh, drop down controls. This was a uh, sort of a turn off to some users. They uh, they didn't like the systems look uh, thick. Uh, system drawn borders, so we've eliminated those uh, on any drop down item, and that is a small one, one less distraction you have to uh, be involved with when uh, working inside of the program. Um, they still exist for programs that uh, or filters, for example, that open uh, in a in a form, so you still have a, a working title bar, and uh, and uh, in some cases, someone does will have a uh, sizing capability and that sort of thing. So we've maintained the thick border for those types of windows. Um, we've also worked uh, really hard on in this one on making the program uh, unifying the color scheme and also uh, giving the user more space to work and also more room for adding future functions. We've tried to optimize our space. One way we've done this was by uh, unif by uh, rather combining the uh, the title bar or I think it's called the caption bar in Windows uh, along with the the menu bar into one one bar basically which now contains the menu bar the title area or the caption area and what we call the permanent strip that used to be part of the uh, context strip which was these uh, controls that change depending on which um, which tool you have active. Um, that that part used to be down here, uh, but since it was permanent, it made more sense to make it part of this uh, upper uh, area here that's part of the caption, the, the title bar, and the menu bar. So that's all been combined into one area, and now the, uh, the content strip has a lot more space, so as in the future we'll have room to add more features. It also opens up more space for the user. There's one less bar across the top, so there's um, probably about 20 more pixels, 22 more pixels of uh, vertical height, uh, vertical sp space on the screen to work uh, with your image. And that's kind of what the point is of having a user interface in a graphics program like this, is for it to be out of the way so you can concentrate on your drawing and your creating your image, creating your content. All right, so we've um, added some new layout features under uh, the Windows menu layout interface styles. There are, there are now optional flat look or raised look. We're using the raised look right now. It's a gradient look. There's also an outline look, which can be used in combination with uh, either the flat or the gradient look. 
and these are a few new options that are completely optional uh, I believe when we start up we are using the flat look which is sort of the um, the going uh, style of the times for now but some people I think appreciate the the older uh, outline look the gradient looks um, because it helps uh, it's, helps you just gives you a visual cue to what uh, what's a button what's a texturing and that sort of thing <clears throat> so we've added that as an optional component to the program is not going to be forced on anyone and uh, those who like the flat look and use the flat look and those who like the great the raised look and use that uh, we don't want to have to make a one-size-fits-all interface for everybody so moving along um, we talked about the GUI. Now we've also added some beautification features. Um, we started uh, started by using uh, GDI Plus under Windows to render our controls, and so we now have some higher degree of control over what gets anti-aliased and what's how things are rendered more uh, more opacity control over opacity and uh, better better quality rendering on our GUI. Uh, you also notice that we've added anti-aliasing around our uh, color pickers, which is uh, how we make them smoother looking before they'd have a sort of a blocky look or a stair step look, and that's been eliminated um, in se several of our color pickers. The triangle picker, the, uh, the harmony panel, and the uh, the color wheel, where they all have a uh, a circular shape that is uh, all been or a triangular shape that's all been uh, improved by anti-aliasing. Um, and in some several other places inside the program there are the similar kinds of improvements uh, moving off of the user interface now I'd like to cover some of the animation features we've uh, added in the program and this is where things really sort of start to get exciting um, now in the past we've introduced some versions that were really full of new features uh, 9.1 for example it had uh, GUI or uh, had uh, GPU accelerated ray tracing, a new crop tool, it had, uh, let's see, a few other features, free transform, and uh, in this version, well, while we tried real hard to concentrate on improving the user experience through improving the, the, the graphics user interface, we've also added some features that are really going to radically alter or improve the workflow for those who are working on animation, um, namely the uh, store feature, the animation store lets you store a copy in memory or on the hard drive of uh, uh, an animation you have loaded and this uh, lets you go back to a uh, either an undo point or it lets you quickly swap back and forth between different type, different animations you have loaded and I'll go ahead and load an animation just to demonstrate um, this is something I accident accidentally captured with my, uh, my handheld uh, little uh, cheap uh, consumer camera uh, one other thing we've done is uh, in the uh, Opening, uh, opening AVI files, we've uh, fixed one bug here where it previously had the uh, frame count off by one, so we fixed that. That was something that was in version 9, I believe, but we've finally fixed that. And uh, now that we have an animation, we can, of course, scrub through it, or we can uh, scrub through it also on the film strip. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and store a copy of this to memory. Or you could just as easily do it to uh, the hard drive if you have a very large animation. It might be better to put it on store it to the hard drive, and it's exactly the same process. You just store it, and it goes into the temp folder, which is uh, kind of convenient. It cleans up after itself, so you don't ever have to really worry about it. You don't have to specify a file name. You just do it. It takes care of itself, and it's done. It's there when you need it. Uh, if you exit the program, it cleans up after itself. If you close the plugin, it cleans up after itself. So not a Actually, it's not a plug-in, it's uh, in internal, so it's uh, very integrated, and uh, you can, of course, minimize these if you don't want them in the way, bring them back at any point in the future if you need them. So, that is, um, now say I loaded another animation, and at some point I wanted to come back to this, all I have to do is click on it, it asks me if I want to restore it, and uh, it'll go ahead and load it back into memory here, reload that animation. This is also a way to... Uh, uh, create an undo point for animations before um, if you worked on an animation you had an undo point in the timeline but if you use another uh, method to create an animation and this is a method that's really been expanded in this version in fact we've added a hundred filters in version 9.2 that now have the ability to animate 
directly from the filter uh, without going through the timeline. So if you just look down here at the bottom of the filter, there's an OK and cancel buttons. There's also an animation button. Just click on that and it will apply the filter with its current settings. Uh, let's see, I'll use the addition here. As you see there, and just click on animate. It says, it asks if I want to apply to all frames. Click OK. And it goes ahead and applies it to all the frames. You don't have to go through the timeline anymore. It's just done. And uh, say I was working on this animation and I did a few more things. Uh, let's do a, something more interesting than a box filter. Let's do zoom blur. Click animate. And maybe one other thing. And oh, the sunset filter. Animate. And as you, see, as you can see, this is a way to really quickly work with animations now. Uh, it's something that's going to really radi radically uh, alter the, and improve the workflow inside the program because you no longer have to uh, go into that, that timeline. Even though the timeline is very powerful and it's very quick and easy to use, um, there's something about just doing that Photoshop style, just going and pulling down a filter and working with it and, and hitting OK and you're done. There's something kind of special about that and be able to go directly to an animation uh, directly from that is uh, one way that it's, it really improves the workflow so but uh, at some point you might realize hey I didn't want to do that and you want to go back to a copy you had earlier well say maybe I do want to come in maybe I don't want to restore it I'll store another copy and then I'll go back to this one and as you can see we've restored that uh, previous copy and it's a very convenient way to create an undo point or to work back and forth between various different animations or even if you had wanted to keep a couple different animations in memory at one time you could do that or you could also have them on the hard drive it works exactly the same way uh, as, you, as you see there that's uh, the one that we stored on the hard drive and it's exactly the same all right so those are a few of the new features coming to uh, Howler 9.2 I've really only briefly uh, touched on everything there's been a lot of bug fixes in this version um, some things users have been asking for for a long time that have finally been uh, integrated into the program. Um, a, a couple of plugins that have been internalized. Uh, at least one that I can think of off the top of my head anyways. Um, that helps usually with the speed. Uh, we also have uh, improvements to the, uh, the ability to store uh, media. Let me briefly cover that. Say you had a, a media you wanted stored. I, I just selected this, uh, this brush with all these flowers in it. Now I store and manage a copy of that. It's just like the animation store, only you have some additional parameters uh, for working with a brush, such as scale, rotation, hue, saturation, value, and uh, RGB colors and things like that. You can also manage the uh, the frames of this uh, this media. This, uh, this is what we call an animated brush inside of the program. Um, this is a feature that's really been improved. The performance has been improved considerably. Uh, it used to delay a little bit when you'd uh, scrub through these things, and now it's like really fast even with a, a whole lot of frames loaded um, there's ability to now iconify that before we just go down into a little bar uh, but now you have the ability to, to still have that icon so you can load this media back up at any point even when it's iconified um, and that sort of thing so like I was saying we've just covered briefly some of the, uh, the, the features uh, Philip will be surely talking more in depth about them over the coming weeks and months, uh, be sure to watch on our uh, Yahoo or Yuhu YouTube YouTube channel, uh, which is PD Howler. Uh, search for PD Howler on YouTube, and you'll be able to find it very easily. And uh, you see Philip demonstrating these things uh, often on a daily or weekly basis, um, usually a couple times a week, anyways. And uh, you'll surely be able to learn a lot more then. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk to you later. Signing off for now. And thanks for uh, waffling and howling, as Philip says.